hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part three of our microwave stand build. Well at this point in time now our carcass is pretty much done. Uh, it's dried up. The only thing that's left to do is all of those air nailer holes. You need to fill it in with something that you don't normally see on my show and that would be wood filler and then we can sand it flush to hide all of those once this unit is painted. So for now, I'm going to put the carcass aside and we're going to turn our attention over to the top of this microwave stand. Well, for the top, I'm using maple. And what I've done is I have milled out some 5 8 thick pieces of maple. They are one and a half inches wide and I have 13 of them here that I want to laminate together. Um, how we're going to do it is using biscuit joints and I will be reversing the grains on them so that if you look at the end grain, the first one will go this way, the next one will go this way, the next one will go this way, and so on and so on. I'm going to reverse the grains like that as best I can to try to avoid this thing doing the big cup over time. Either way, for now, what I'm going to do is get out the biscuit joiner, I'm going to lay these out, mark them out, add the biscuits, and we're going to glue them together and clamp it up. Well, glue-ups like this are not only time-consuming, but they're also extremely messy. So for that reason, uh, on the time-consuming, I'm using Tight Bond 3 again to give us a longer work working time. If you can get a helper with this, guys, do it. For me, I'm alone today, so uh, we're going to do our best to get this glue-up done quickly and efficiently. It's going to be messy. And uh, I wouldn't worry about the squeeze out right off the bat. I would worry about getting the pieces together, getting them clamped and held down. Now I don't have any calls, which may cause me a problem as this may want to bow. So you wanna be careful not to put too much clamping pressure to get this to pop up in the middle. So I have a clamp, a bar clamp at either end. and I'm gonna be using some quick grips as I go along to support it and keep them held down. Kind of the cheater's call, if you will. Enough talk. Uh, I can't talk and glue at the same time, so let's just get this glued up. And now, we wait. Well now you just want to wait a little bit until that squeeze out gets a little bit gummy. And then you want to take a one inch scraper. We're going to scrape that squeeze out off of there. It'll go a long way to helping with the cleanup later when we sand this thing once it's to its final dimension. Final dimension, by the way, which is going to be 27 inches long and 20 inches deep or wide. Now, right now, if you do the math, 13 pieces times an inch and a half does not equal 20 inches. It equals 19 and a half. So for that, what I need is some half inch thick stock by an inch and a quarter wide. And we're going to, once we're done framing this out, we're going to put a border around it. But we're going to get to that a little while later in this show. Let's uh, get out our dovetail jig because it's time to play around and make that drawer for this microwave stand. I've cut the pieces of the drawer to the dimensions that I need. For this drawer, that will be 16 by 21 and a half, which is one inch shorter than what the width of our opening is, but that allows for our hardware. So you may want to check your hardware and see what kind of clearance and allowances you need. I'm not going to get into the operation of the lead jig. I have a tutorial on the channel for through dovetails if you're interested in that. So I'm just going to move forward, 
get the dovetails routed in the drawer, get the drawer put together. We're going to cut a dado all the way around to accept the bottom of our drawer. And then once we get that done, we're going to move on to mounting the hardware and testing our drawer in the cavity of the carcass. Well, you now want to mount the drawer hardware into your cabinet and on your drawer. Now, I can't tell you how to do it because I don't know what kind of hardware you're going to get. So, all I can tell you from here is make sure that you size your drawer accordingly with the um, clearances that your hardware requires. As well, make sure that your hardware is square to the cabinet and I guess just follow the um, manufacturer's recommendation for whatever hardware you get. Well, with our drawer installed and the cabinet pretty much complete now, we just need to make the drawer face. And for that, we're going to need some half inch thick poplar and I think what I'll do is measure the opening and make it a half an inch larger all the way around. Now with our drawer opening being five inches by 22 and a half, I took the half inch poplar, cut it to six inches by 23 and a half, and I've mounted it centered on our drawer. Now this is only temporarily mounted here, only held on by the knob itself. Now, I'm not going to fully attach this until after it's painted, but when it does get attached, part of the back will be left bare so that wood glue can adhere it, and this will be glued onto the face of the drawer. Guys, this is basically it for the cabinet itself. So this is going to disappear for a little while, where it's going to get two coats of white primer and sand it between coats, and as well from there it will take on two coats of white paint. So this will have a very different look the next time you see it. I'm going to get this out of the shop and I am going to turn around and we're going to go back to our top uh, made of maple that we laminated earlier. Well, before we can take the carcass away, there's one more thing that we need to consider, and that is the mounting of the maple top on the carcass. And for that, I'm going to use these, and I'll give you just a close-up of that there. And what that is, is their tabletop clips that are the same ones I used on the roll top desk build. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my biscuit joiner, and I'm going to place three slots in the front, three in the back, that are three eighths of an inch down from the top edge of each of these pieces. And that will be the places where our tabletop brackets go later on. So I'm gonna get those done and then we'll get the carcass out of here and start on the top. Well, my initial plan was to frame our tabletop with an inch and a quarter wide strip, half inch thick around the three sides to frame it all in and give it the appearance of being thicker. But once I sat it on top of the carcass and saw what the five eighths of an inch thick maple looked like on the carcass, I thought it looked just fine and I didn't want to bulk it up anymore. So all that's left to do now is we need to clean up the squeeze out that we didn't get out earlier. Uh, and we're going to take a belt sander to it and cut it down to size, which will be 19 and a half inches wide by 27 inches long. I'm also going to put a small round over, a 1 8 round over around both edges, top and bottom. 
and just to kind of take off that crisp edge of the maple and then it's time to put a finish on it. So enough talk, let's get this thing sanded up. A microwave cart. Well, I guess it's not really a cart because it doesn't have wheels, but a microwave stand. Guys, this was a fun project for me. A bit of a pain in the butt at certain times with the finicky assembly and that sort of thing. Um, but all in all, I think the project turned out really well. If you're going to paint the one that you make, that's if, of course, you make one, you're going to have to remember that if you use water-based primer, that is going to raise the grain of things like the poplar face of the drawer and that sort of thing. So you want to give light sandings in between to take that grain back down to get a better finish in the end. Now, this here, of course, had the towel rack mounted on the side once all the paint was finished and done, and that will come in handy as well. Design changes. What would I change? What would I have done differently? Well, right off the bat, I bring up the tabletop where I shrunk it down. And once I saw it all put together, I thought that 5.8 thickness looked just fine. Um, would I change it now that I see it together? No, I actually really like it. So no trouble there. But one thing I would change is I think I would have made those legs... Um, the same size, an inch and a quarter, but the connecting bars that are between them, instead of being a three quarter inch material with a uh, one inch wide strip, I think it would have gone more like an inch and a half wide strip and a little thicker, if not the same thickness as our legs. Just something that I may have changed. It would have, of course, increased the weight and increased the cost, but it would have minimized the frustration putting it together because I could have rearranged my dowels a little differently so that they didn't interfere with the dados that took the panels for the sides and the back. But live and learn, hindsight is 2020, and just because I draw it out on paper doesn't necessarily mean that it works. Pay attention, <laughs> especially when it comes to things like routing grooves for panels to make sure that you are routing in the right spot. As we saw on the show, um, I ended up with a double slot on one of the legs because I inadvertently kind of lost my sight of what I was doing there and was thinking in reverse. And the next thing I know, I've got the slot in the wrong spot. It's okay. In this instance, it ended up on the inside and no harm, no foul, but uh, that could have been disastrous if it was any more off than what it was. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the project. It's been a lot of fun bringing it to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you get the notifications on future shows. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun. The show wouldn't be the same without the audience that watches it, and I really do appreciate you guys tuning in every week. And with that being said, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.